Today, I'm gonna to explain how to count basic rhythms in the most simple and clear way possible. The first thing I want you to notice is how music is broken up into these vertical lines called bar lines. And each of these lines helps break music up into these boxes called measures. Each of these boxes or measures can fit a specific number of beats, which is illustrated by the top number of this thing that we call the time signature. If the top number is a four, that means we can fit four beats into each of these boxes. One thing I wanna note is that for each of these boxes, you're gonna be counting up to four, and then when you get into a new measure, you're actually going to be counting from one to four again. So in a measure of four, four, you should always be counting one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I want to quickly explain what the word tempo means because you're gonna hear it a lot. Tempo is the speed at which you count the beats. A fast tempo would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A slow tempo would be one, two, three, four. Another important thing to mention is that if you have notes in both the treble clef and bass clef, they're actually counted simultaneously in vertical columns. So you would count this as beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. And if you were playing them together, and it would just be played like this. One, two, three, four. Now let's talk about the different types of notes and how we can fit them in to these boxes or measures. The first note is a quarter note, and this gets one beat. You can have how many of these in a measure of four, four? You can have four of them, like that. And our beats would be one, two, three, four. A half note is worth two beats, and you can fit two of them in a measure of four, four. And this would be counted one, two, three, four. A dotted half note gets three beats, and you can only fit one of those in a measure of four, four. And why is that? Well, if you have three, and you put like another one, that would be six, that's too many. So you can only have one dotted uh, half note to equal three beats. So how many beats can we also fit in a box with a dotted half note? There's a few options, but just going over what we talked about so far, we can have a quarter note. So this measure would be counted one, two, three, four. A whole note gets four beats and it takes up a whole measure of four, four. One, two, three, four. This is a quarter rest, and it gets one beat, but of silence. Some options when it comes to counting quarter rests is that you can just say the number and not play anything, and then just come in on the next beat, which would actually sound something like this. One, two, three, four. Or you can use the syllable shh. And some people like to do this just because it really helps fill in the gaps of where those notes are supposed to be. So you don't have to guess. So you could count it also like this. Shh, two, shh, four. This is a half rest, and a half rest gets two beats, but of silence. Just like the quarter rest, you can choose to not play for a certain number of beats. So you just have one, two, and then you would come in and play on three, four, or you can use this syllable. Just like the quarter rest goes shh, the half rest goes shh. We're adding a shh for each extra beat that it takes up. So you could also count this one as shh, three, four. So finding a dotted half rest is rather rare, but it would get three beats. Instead, what you find more commonly is a half rest, which is worth two, followed by a quarter rest, which is worth one. This is a whole rest. And you can either count the four and not play, one, two, three, four, or you can go shh, shh, shh. <laughs> We're just doing the shush again. You're just adding a shh for each uh, extra additional beat. There's still a lot more to understand about rhythm in the rest of today's lesson, but I gotta test your skills on what we learned so far. So it's drill time. So how this will work is I'm gonna show you an example and then you're gonna have to play it but I'm going to count out a measure ahead of time by saying one, two, ready, play. And then you play at that tempo that I set for you with the count off. Afterwards, I'll count it again and then I'll play it to give you the answer. Here's the first example. One, 
two, ready, play. Okay, now I'm going to count it again, except I'm going to play it to show you the answer. One, two, ready, play. One, two, three, shh. Here's the second example, and remember that I'm going to count a, a measure to set the tempo. One, two, ready, play. Okay, so you should have played it, and now I'm going to do it. One, two, ready, play. Shh. Two, shh. Here's the last example for this drill. I'm going to count out a measure before you begin, and then you'll play. One, two, ready, play. And now I'm going to do it. One, two, ready, play. Shh. Two, three, shh. These are eighth notes, and they only get half a beat, and that's why we can fit eight of them into a measure of 4-4. Four, four. We still have our four beats like before, but we have to account for the other half of a beat that's missing, and we use something called and. So in between each of the beats, I'm going to be drawing this little plus symbol, and that's our and. And so instead of one, two, three, four, we're actually going to count this one and two and three and four and notice how i double timed the notes before it was one two three four now they're twice as fast one and two and three and four and if you have a measure of quarter notes and eighth notes i would continue to count the quarter notes as one and along with the eighth notes to maintain consistency let me show you what i'm talking about so I only have the eighth notes on beat two, two and. But even when I'm counting the quarter notes before, I'm still counting one and, two and, three and, four and. I'm still holding over the quarter notes for the right amount of beats. I'm still counting and. The reason we do that is that when you're going from quarter notes to eighth notes, back to quarter notes, a lot of students kind of guess where the beats are. They'll go one, two and, three, right? Because they don't have those ands to continue to take up uh, each in between each of those beats. That's called subdivision. And the more subdivision you do, the easier it is to stay in time. Here, we have a dotted quarter note. Now, question, you saw a dotted half note earlier, right? And the half note got two beats. The dotted half note got three beats. So what's the correlation? You may think, oh, the dot adds one beat to the whole thing, not quite, actually adds half of the note's value back to itself. So if we have a quarter note worth one beat, we have the dot, which adds half of the note's value back to itself. So we have one plus one half. So that's what it's telling us. And so a dotted quarter note is gonna get one and a half beats. That's why a dotted half note got three, because a half note got two, plus what's half of two, one, right? Quarter note, and that's gonna equal uh, three, or your dotted half note. So here we have a measure with a dotted quarter note in it, and the question is, how long are we gonna hold this dotted quarter note for? Remember that it gets one and a half beats, and we already know how to chop a beat into two halves, right? One and two and three and four and, like we did with the eighth notes. That's what an eighth note does basically chopping a quarter note into two parts. So a dotted quarter note is going to get three halves, right? Because there's three halves in one and a half. And here's how you're going to count that. So far, we have one and. That's going to, that would be if we have a quarter note, right? And then actually, we're going to have the first part of beat two. Each of these now represents a half. So one and two. So those are our three halves. And we're actually going to come in and play this eighth note on beat two. The and of two, we call that. And by the way, an eighth note without another eighth note attached actually looks like this, where the the kind of the stem connecting them, or the line connecting them gets broken off and kind of falls to the side, just to let you know. And then um, continuing with the rhythm here, three and, four and. So this is how you're going to count this rhythm on the piano. One and, two and, three and, four and. 
So now that we've talked about counting eighth notes and dotted quarter notes, it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to making sure that you're counting consistently and in time. It's kind of easy to count quarter notes. When you got that one and two and, and then mixing between everything, it can be a little bit of a challenge. So here's two tips to help you count more accurately. Tip number one is to count out a measure before you start playing. So if you're in a piece of four, four, count it out just like we did during the drill. One, two, ready, play, and then start playing. That will help set your tempo. And then another thing that can help you with your rhythm is the metronome, which provides a series of loud beeps and clicks that helps you hit the beat. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this thing basically counts for you, but I mean, not with the numbers, really just a series of bips, bips and clips, <laughs> bips and beeps and clicks and beeps to help keep your time. I have a story about the metronome. So when I first encountered the metronome, I was in my first year of college with my teacher, Vincent Craig, who unfortunately passed away this last year and I'm still trying to deal with it. But um, the point of the story is, is that I had never practiced with the metronome before. And I, it was just such a hard time for me to hear this and play it along with my own playing at the same time. And I was just really, really struggling. And he actually had one of these metro, no, well, he had one of these metronomes, that's right one of these mechanical metronomes. So it was more, more like this. You know, it's the same thing, but just more mechanical. But it, I was so bad at playing along with it that he eventually grabs it and he holds it up to my ear like a telephone. It, you know, I think you have to hold it up pretty straight for it to work, but it was just like this. So I'm so nervous, like trying to figure out how to play this song. And he's like yelling at me with this thing in my face. And you know, it's pretty traumatizing at the time, but actually I, I think it's a pretty fun story. But anyway, what you need to get out of this is that playing with the metronome at first can be a really nerve wracking experience, but in the long run, it actually really, really helped my playing, uh, bring my playing to new levels. Metronome can help you identify mistakes you didn't know about, help you play better in time, which is gonna make your music sound a lot more musical. So if you remember in the beginning, I talked about that thing called the time signature and how the top number tells you how many beats or in each measure. Remember, we've been talking about four, four so far, four beats in a measure. And that bottom number actually means that the quarter note gets one beat. We're going to learn about two other time signatures that end in four. So quarter note still gets one beat. And those are two, four and three, four. Two, four is a lot like four, four, except you only have two beats instead of four. So two quarter notes you can have, or you can have one half note, something like that. And a question you're, you should be asking is this, Tim, what's the difference between two measures of two, four and just one measure of four, four, right? Since two measures of two, four would be the same thing or would it, it's actually not exactly the same thing. Let's go back to, well, let me explain this first. So in two, four in all music and time signatures, the first beat is the strong beat. And so it has a natural accent on it. And that helps move the music along, even if there's not an accent written there. Now in 4-4, four, four, it's slightly different. So in 4-4, four, four, there's still an accent on beat one, and that's actually a strong accent. So you're gonna hit that with quite a bit more force. And then there's actually a weaker accent on beat three. So the music, it's gonna kind of sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, where you really have that strong accent on one, and you feel the weaker one on three. It might not be that prevalent in the music. You're really gonna have to listen for it, but trust me, it is there. Whereas two, four has a strong accent every other beat. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that is the difference. Three, four has three beats in a measure. And just like the other time signatures, there's an accent on beat one, but that's the only accent. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, one, two. And three, four is really good for songs that are waltzes. Now I'm gonna explain 16th notes. And for this, we're gonna go back to four, four time signature. So remember before when I was talking about eighth notes and we had the four beats in our measure and then we use the term and to 
account for the other half of a beat that we need. One and two and three and four and. These are sixteenths. We still have our four beats, but now each beat is divided up into four parts, which you can see because they are all beamed together like this. So there's beats one, two, three, and four. And you know what? We can also put our ands just like we did before on the other half of the beat. But now we have to account for two other parts of the beat that we didn't account for before. So we do this with this terminology. It's going to be said one E and a. And then the next beat is going to be two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Nice and even too. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And that's how to count 16th notes. Okay, so say you have 16th notes, 8th notes, and 16th notes. You should be still counting your E and a's. So here's two E and uh, even though you're counting eighth notes, you're still subdividing into those four parts and that will help you count consistently throughout since it will be more like this. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Okay, so you've learned a lot about how to count basic rhythms in this lesson, but I can't let you go that easy. We still have one more drill time to drill you on this stuff. And then I have actually a bonus tip or two at the end. So this drill time is gonna be a little bit different. In the last one, I gave you the rhythm first and then made you count it. This time, I'm going to give you the rhythm, I'm going to play it, and you're gonna to have to tell me where I made a mistake. So I'm gonna do one, two, ready, play, and then I'm gonna play it. And then we're gonna see where I went wrong possibly. One, two, ready, play. And one more time. One, two, ready, play. Did you catch it? Remember, we have quarter note, quarter rest, quarter note, quarter rest. So it should have sounded more like this. Where that first one was shorter. I was actually holding over this note through the rest, and that's where I made the mistake. And that's actually a common mistake that a lot of students make is when they have a note and then they have a rest right after, especially if it's like a quarter rest or eighth rest, something short, they'll just hold it over. So watch out for that. Here we have the next example. One, two, ready, play. One more time. One, two, ready, play. So did you spot the mistake? It was right here. I actually played two eighth notes instead of that quarter note there. It should have actually sounded like this. Kind of like the beginning of Jingle Bells. Okay, so here's our last example. It should be pretty easy to hear if I got this one wrong, right? Well, we'll see how it goes. One, two, ready, play. What did I do wrong? Did you hear it? Well, remember, eighth notes are supposed to be really even. One and two and three and four and, and I added kind of like a swing rhythm where I made it long, short, long, short, long, short, and just to kind of introduce you into swing rhythm. But remember, if it doesn't say swing, we got to play them evenly. I still have some really important things to teach you in this lesson, like six, eight time signature, syncopation, and how to practice rhythm. But first, I just want to quickly say thank you so much to all those that have supported the channel throughout the years, from the regular viewers, to the channel members, to the mods, and people that sign up for courses over on my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com. We wouldn't have been able to reach as many students as we've, as we've had without your help, so thank you. So we talked a lot about time signatures that end in four, 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 three, four, two, four. But what if it ends in an eight, like six, eight? Well, remember the six, six beats in a measure, top number, bottom number tells you what note gets one beat. So if it ends in a four, that means that the quarter note, one out of four, gets one beat. If it ends in an eight, you can think about that as a one out of eight or an eighth. So an eighth note gets one beat. And having the eighth note be worth one beat has an implication throughout all of the other beats, and that is 
what? They are doubled because if you think about it, a quarter note used to get one beat, but now an eighth note does. So a quarter note must get two beats. And actually, believe it or not, we already have enough beats in that this measure because we're counting up to six and each of these is worth two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Although a lot of times in 6-8, you're not going to find three quarter notes right in a row. What you're going to find a lot of times instead is two pairings of three eighth notes apiece. These aren't triplets. These are actually eighth notes, and they're going to be counted one beat apiece. So here, let's beat one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And remember when I was talking earlier about accents? Um, in the measures like 4-4 four, four has one in the beginning and then on beat three. Well, this one has one on beat one and another one on beat four. And actually, 6-8 is known as a compound time signature because it can be counted as six individuals, one, two, three, four, five, six, or it can be counted in two groups of three. One, two, one, two. You can think about it as two beats just split up in the three parts instead of two like you would find in 4-4. Four, four. A quick introduction to 9-8. Remember now we have nine eighth notes in each measure, and this is what it's gonna look like. It looks a lot like 6-8, except there's another group of three on here since we have to make up nine. And the accents are gonna be on beat one, beat four, and beat seven, and that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Just like 6-8, it's a compound time signature, and you can actually count it into three beats, three of three, basically. One, two, three. Okay, we're back to four, four. One, two, three, four. Now, what if, gotta ask yourself, what if I displace the beats? And what I mean is instead of having a note on beat one, two, three, four, what if I had beats on one and two and three and four and? Well, that'd be pretty weird, huh? but you probably heard rhythms like that before. And that is what we call syncopation. We've taken the note that was supposed to be on beat one and we've moved it over a half a beat and it has this type of feel to it. One and two and three and four and. Bum, ba, 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 ba. So there's a few different types of syncopation. One is where you move over the beat like we talked about, but another one can be created with ties because you're actually tying over this beat, which means you're not hitting on beat one, you're actually gonna be hitting on the and, and that creates a syncopation. So at the end of this lesson here, I wanna give you just a couple tips on how to actually practice note reading, because it's pretty easy. One thing is clap the rhythms in your music. Find a piece of music that you can find the recording to, to check your answers, and see if you can clap or play through maybe the melody, and see if you can get the rhythms right. Number two, in the pieces that you are working on, make sure that you're writing out the rhythms in those tricky areas. It's not cheating and it will actually really, really help you get through those tougher sections easier in the future if you map them out. Number three, which is the best way to practice common rhythm patterns, and that is to watch videos on how to count common rhythm patterns. And guess what? I have you covered. These are the most common rhythm patterns. Beginners mess up all the time and you don't want to mess them up. If you avoid messing them up, you'll be able to learn piano and any instrument way better. So the number one thing you want to do with the rest of your day is to watch this lesson. It will help you out a ton and is highly recommended to watch after this one. Your piano teacher, Tim here. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson. I see you in the next lesson. Vill du inte spela något för mig? Om det inte är nu, mamma. Mm.